The video will start in a few seconds, but as a reminder, remember, if you have a question, comment, or suggestion about this video, please follow the link below. Also note that you can post anonymously. Hello again, I'm Rodney Reynolds from 3dgameman.com and welcome to another video review. Today I'm looking at two power supplies from Silverstone, the ST55FG, which is the 550 watt model, and the ST65FG, which is the 650 watt model. Now the contents of these boxes are pretty much the same, except that this box houses the 550 watt model and this one the 650 watt model but I'll be opening up the 650 watt model. Inside there is a user's manual, a specifications manual. The power supply is in a bubble wrap bag. There are some velcro tie downs, cable ties and four black thumb screws a power cord, and modular leads. Now the Strider Gold series of power supplies range in wattage from 550 watts all the way up to 1200 watts. So there's lots of power supplies to choose from in this series. However, both of these power supplies are new to the lineup. Now, speaking of wattage, how is it determined? Well, to understand this, you need to know what rails are. And rails are basically well-regulated transformers which convert domestic current into the voltages that your computer system can use. And there are essentially two different rails, the 3.3 slash 5 volt rail and the 12 volt rail. Now, in this particular case, the approximate maximum peak output of the 3.3 slash 5 volt rail on the 550 watt model is 140 watts and on the 650 watt model it is 150 watts. Also the 12 volt rail on the 550 watt model is 540 watts and on the 650 watt model it is 648 watts. I should also note that the 550 watt models peak wattage is 600 watts and the 650 watt models peak wattage is 700 watts. The 3.3 slash 5 volt rail is responsible for the motherboard, memory, PCI cards, and so on, while the 12 volt rail is responsible for the hard drives, optical drives, fans, CPU, video cards, etc. It's also important to know the peak amps on each rail. Well, on the 550 watt model, the 3.3 volt rail is 22 amps, the plus 5 volt rail is 18 amps, and the single plus 12 volt rail is 45 amps. Now on the 650 watt model, the plus 3.3 volt rail is 22 amps, the plus 5 volt rail is 20 amps, and the single plus 12 volt rail is 50 Four amps. There are a number of important things to remember when selecting a power supply. The first is wattage. Determine how much wattage you are going to require by the amount of hardware that you will be installing. Now generally speaking a medium to high-end gaming rig would require a 500 to 700 watt power supply for a hardcore system. Select a power supply that's around 800 watts. If however you are building an extreme gaming rig with a top-of-the-line multiple video card set up with lots of other hardware, select a power supply that's 1000 watts or greater. Second, it should be at or above 80% efficient at typical load and that will not be a problem for these power supplies considering these have an efficiency between 87 to 90% at 20% to 100% loading. Third, it should meet the latest ATX and other current standards, environmental directives, over voltage, under voltage, and other protections. These power supplies meet all current standards. Fourth, I'd recommend choosing a power supply that has APFC. APFC, or Active Power Factor Correction, assists the power supply in being more efficient and therefore stable under load. APFC basically reduces total harmonics, corrects input voltage, and allows for full input voltage range. Now thankfully these power supplies have APFC. Fifth, there are three main certifications, AD+, NVIDIA SLI, and AMD Crossfire. Many of today's high-end power supplies meet one or more of these certifications. Now these power supplies are certified to meet the AD+, 
gold requirements. Sixth, look for a power supply that uses Japanese capacitors. This ensures a much more reliable product than a power supply with low grade capacitors. Now, these power supplies have primary capacitors that are Japanese, so that's fantastic. Also, get a power supply that has enough leads for your setup. Consider a power supply as well that has a modular design, which these do, because it will reduce the cable mess inside of the case. Also, it is important to get a power supply with a fantastic warranty, and these power supplies come with a three-year warranty. These power supplies have a black lead-free paint finish and the housing is steel. They also include a quiet 120 millimeter fan and plenty of ventilation holes. So these power supplies will remain cool in almost any environment and note, the power cable connection and the power switch. These power supplies are 100% modular. There are no hard wired leads whatsoever. Now have a closer look at the modular connectors. I love power supplies that are modular because you only need to use the leads required for your particular setup. And this not only looks great, but it also frees up space inside of the case and thus you will have increased airflow inside of the case. And take note that these modular leads are sleeved. Five hundred to seven hundred watt power supplies are very, very popular, and the reason for that is they are cost effective. And to be honest, they are more than enough for most computer systems. And these power supplies here huh, will meet that need easily. They are eighty plus gold certified. Come with a quiet one hundred and twenty millimeter fan, as well as a one hundred percent modular design. As well, they are backed by Silverstone and come with a three-year warranty. I mean, you cannot in any way go wrong with either one of these power supplies. Just check out how much wattage you're going to need for your particular system and possibly your, your future needs as well, and then choose a wattage power supply from there. And remember that in this particular series, the Strider series, they have power supplies that range from this one, the 550 watt, all the way up to 12 100 watts. Without a doubt, two of these power supplies are 100% kick-ass. Until next time, take care. I hope you enjoyed this video review and please note that pricing for this product is available on the 3D Game Man video review page.